Okay, let's see how that keeps it. Uh, I wanted to redo the video where we had the Intifatigable versus the Cheese Wedge. Uh, the Intifatigable seems like it's a little too well equipped to be in the Cheese Wedge. And uh, it was equipped with the lamb system and basically the cheese witch didn't really stand a chance so I asked uh, Chazboy if he'd be willing to uh, balance things out just a little bit with his design uh, uh, I'd like to redo the match and uh, thankfully he was a pretty good sport about it and went ahead and gave me this newer version of the cheese wedge Uh, basically the torpedo or the the torpedo interceptors and the lamp system has been stripped out of it and uh, it's probably going to be a more interesting match this time around and not so lopsided so here we go cheese wedge is getting off its first salvo and trying to get itself into its firing position. Uh, let's see what happened. With, ooh, that was a that's pretty good block confetti there. Yeah, it was crazy. Last time I tried recording this, uh, Cheese Wedge didn't even get off a shot. Well, it got off several shots, it just none of them could hit because this thing had just a crazy good lamp system on it. But I gotta admit, it's still absorbing the damage pretty good. But that was a pretty good hit to that turret there. Holy crap. And if it takeable, looks like it might be taking a few torpedoes to the stern here. Yep. And keep in mind, people, that these are dumb fire. Here comes another spread of torpedoes. I don't think they're going to be as lucky as the first group. Yeah, I think all of those are probably going to miss. Nope. Got hit by two of them. This is actually one of the uh, better armored ships during the whole tournament here, and it's no wonder that it actually uh, won the championship. So let's see how the cheese wedge is doing. Well, looks like it's managing to keep its armor pretty well maintained, and the cannons. They just keep on firing. It looks like this one suffered some pretty good damage here. It looks like a good number of them are still operational. Uh, Chaz Boy's Infatigable here has lost its rearmost turret. And, well, might as well have lost this one too, because there's like nothing left of it. Looks like he added some heavy armor to the inside of this. There's still a fairly substantial cost difference between the two, I think. Yeah, that one's just a little under 3k and that's about 400k. But Cheese Wedge is in the lead as far as taking uh, damage this time. And again, you guys kind of saw it had a bit of a crazy repair bot spam going on. Well, at some point, I would like to try to film uh, Heitzmeister's, I think it's the Constancia class battleship. I want to see how that thing is going to fare against my new Corollas Rex battleship. 
That thing is a beast. And it's pretty rare I find a, an adequate ship to test my designs on. I had a little bit of trouble trying to set this up because um, the the steam drive for this thing needed a little bit of reworking to get this thing to where it would function correctly again. I got the two on the outside working, but it seems like these two on the inside just did not want to be of any help. Uh, and Cheese Wedge has Looks like it has repaired all of its damage. Still pummeling the hell out of uh, Indefatigable here. hasn't released any more torpedo salvos, but I guess that was getting too expensive for it. But yeah, the uh, cheese wedge is just a constant barrage of cram cannons here. Still a lot of butt confetti coming off of that. Uh, cheese Wedge has still got its uh, health as high as it can possibly be. It just cannot seem to get past that repair block spam. Or repair bot spam, I'm sorry. And that looks like uh, pretty much about all the cram cannons have been disabled except for this turret right here. Came very close though. He really liked using that deck armor. But the proof is in the pudding. Uh, also, I kind of want to apologize to you guys because um, I recently got my booster shot for the uh, COVID-19 vaccine and it was kicking my ass. I would wake up and like be completely exhausted. Had a bit of a light cough. What else? Oh yeah, everything hurt. That was a pretty rough week for me. Hopefully I'll be able to get back to making more From the Depths content for you guys. People really seem to have enjoyed the, uh, the exhibition matches so far, so I think it's going to end up being quite a fun series for people to watch.
it looks like Cheese Wedge is using some kind of inertial fuse. Of course, I can't really tell you guys because I have them both spawned in on hostile teams, so yeah. Despite being slightly disabled, the cheese wedge is really doing well about keeping up with uh, trying to get turned on a target correctly. But it just goes to show you how much of a dramatic change you can see in From the Depths just by adding or removing one or two specific systems. Because last time Indefatigable was absolutely dominating this fight. And now it seems like it's completely swung the other way. Looks like he was really piling on the alloy armor. I would have done the same. There was actually a point in the steam pile of ship tournament while I was considering trying to minimize or ban using light alloy armor altogether, so a lot of people started to complain that they weren't able to get their ships to uh, float otherwise. So I kind of had to reverse that decision. But it used to be like back in the earlier days of From the Depths, uh, you could go up to like about three whole meters of metal before you actually had any real concern about uh, your ship not being able to float on its own. And then downward props and PID kind of went and yeah. Which is crazy because at one point I just refused to make any ships that had downward props and made use of PID. But uh, as I have uh, advanced in my FTD building skills, I have discovered that it's really a much more efficient means of doing things, at least space-wise. I mean, yes, you're going to be having a semi-constant drain on your resources just from the um, from running the engines just to keep the ship upright. But probably one of the most important resources that you have in any From the Depths match is volume. And I would argue that it's almost more important than materials. Because uh, the smaller volume and ship that you have, the more you can actually have in a battle. I mean, think of it this way. Um, you could have, like, a bunch of really strong, tough smaller ships. Or you could have like one big, tough, heavier ship, but it would take up like way more materials to build it because it needs the extra room for adding buoyancy, like um, the container or not the containers, but the the, um, the airtight compartments. Let's see where they're at here, as far as damage. Yeah, and if it has got like maybe another 10% health and it's gonna go down. No, we're just kind of waiting for Indefatigable to just kind of give up the ghost here.
Yeah, I'm starting to think uh, Oyar the Bug here, he just kind of went with uh, inertial HE spam, which that's completely fine. That's a valid tactic. I just kind of would have liked to see a bit more pen depth with this, because I, I don't think that's what we're getting. It's just mostly surface detonations for these. Looks like we still have uh, some remnants here of a lamb system in here. That's fine, just so as long as there's not all lambs. Uh, while I'm filming this, I should let you guys know that I kind of uh, made a slight adjustment to the rules for doing these exhibition matches. Uh, basically, if there's like any really outstanding issue that could easily be fixed, I'm just going to go ahead and make it and try to the best of my ability, try to replicate what I believe the the original author's intention was, if that makes sense. But other than that, the rules will still be exactly the same. But I'm not going to do like very, very crazy things like removing a turret or anything like that. Uh, just really minor stuff like maybe changing some AI or PID or local weapon controller settings, things like that. Nothing major. Uh, Chazboy really, really, really wanted to make sure that these uh, cram cannons did not blow up. But you know, she is rolling over. And we have about finished this video. Another 2% and we can call it a video. Just a little bit more to go. Of course, good luck trying to get through the bottom of this hole. It looks like it's uh, pretty thick here. It's at 53%. And there she goes. Alright, so I hope that was a bit more interesting to watch. I want to once again thank uh, Chazboy for making some quick revisions to this to make this match a little bit more fair. Really appreciate the uh, help with that. Uh, Yar... I'm not quite sure what to say on this because had you had used this thing you would have utterly crushed everything out there but at the same time you thought it would have been too cheesy for everyone so while I kind of wish I could have seen it dominate things I'm kind of glad it didn't just like outright dominate the whole tournament that and your smallest design was a lot more prettier than this thing anywho I'll go ahead and wrap up the video here, so I'd like to thank you all for watching. This has been Damodaki 2, and this has been another one of the exhibition matches. And uh, let's see who's next on the docket as far as what the next match is, and we'll call her a video. Let's see here. It looks like Super Miner wants to go up against Mady's Kaiyushu. So that's what we'll be doing next time. So have yourselves a hell of a day, 
and keep your hammer high. Later.